All right, it's 8.30. I will uh, call the uh, meeting to order. We'll please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Item three on our agenda is an invitation for a citizen to schedule time on the commission agenda for an item not listed. Are there any citizens who would like to add anything to our agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on to item four, which is the uh, approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion to be made and seconded. Any changes to the agenda? No, not that I'm aware of. Any other comments on the agenda? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. We have an agenda. Item five is a consent agenda items. We have approval of the minutes. We have approval of the travel requests, approval of personnel action notices, and approval of the human services report. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. A motion been made and seconded. Any comments on any of the uh, items A through D? Any comments? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Pierce? Aye. Forsma? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Item six, routine business, approval of the claims. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Any comments on the claims? Any questions or comments on the claims? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Forsma? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Item B is department head reports. We're going to start with Brian from the highway department. Good morning. Morning. A little update here. We got our striping done on our chip seal projects and our routine striping with the 80-20 split with the state of South Dakota. Uh, October 22nd and 23rd, we replaced a couple of culverts on County Road 2. Uh, I know that this was an area where some hunters were using, and we replaced a, a approach on a township road also uh, in order to improve some drainage up there. And then we did get that patch back in last week uh, before it got cold here. And 22nd, uh, we began some mastic sealing on that same stretch of road, uh, helping fill the cracks in. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but I know we got some public comment out there when we were doing that about how it improved the ride. Uh, the 28th, we replaced a culvert due to separation on County Road 21 uh, south of Aurora. Uh, culvert was separating. That's probably going to be our last culvert for the year now that it's, the ground's locking up. But uh, The 29th, I signed a, a certificate of substantial completion for the bridge south of the power plant on County Road 27. Uh, the only outlying issue will be any erosion control measures that need to be readdressed next year. So that one is done. On October 30th, uh, I met with John uh, Ritter House here and we'll be t uh, speaking the bridges south of on County Road 27 here, or 77 here after a bit at nine o'clock. And then uh, October 30th, I met with Banner in regards to our structures below 20 feet and looking at some of the bridges on the township's roads as far as condition. And then October 31st, um, at my department had review. Any questions? You get off easy today, Brian. No questions. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Marty, have the Sheriff's Department report, please. morning morning just uh and i handed out the uh, statistics for the jail and so forth and just we have present time 40 inmates and uh, so again anything over 31 we're considered full and uh, we have 157 participants down a couple from last time i gave a report um, but we continue to stay busy 10 on gps 69 on uas um, i have 27 on scram 44 
on PBTs and uh, five on, on drug patches. So we continue to, to stay busy with the 24-7. Uh, just, uh, just briefly, game day, we survived game day. Um, we staffed the jail um, pretty good. Um, biggest problem is just space, um, you know, trying to handle everything for everybody that comes in, especially when they come in all at once. They did a sobriety checkpoint, so we're keeping the state's attorneys busy. <laughs> Anyway, um, uh, Friday night they did a, a, a sobriety checkpoint on 6th Street that brought in 12 maybe, 11 or 12 DWIs. And then on Saturday night there was, an, uh, there was 24. I, I quickly gave you just a little rundown, just to let you know what came. This is only the, what came to uh, the jail that was booked in. You know, the city police handled a lot of other things maybe, uh, you know, by citation and so forth. So the, the sheet I gave you just kind of compares a little bit uh, on when I, on, on the end there, where it said 35 were brought to uh, the detention center in the two nights, Friday, Saturday night, with a total of 74 charges. So 35 people had 74 charges. In other words, there was multiple charges on some arrests. So there was 24 DWIs, you know, in the course of two nights. And then when you have a sobriety checkpoint, that loads us up pretty much. Um, that, that, that four hours brought in 11 or 12 uh, DWIs. And DWIs are, 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 are lengthy uh, to handle because you got to book them in and and either they're going to stay in detox or they they find a ride to come get them you know so it, uh, it it's a, it's a little lengthy process but uh, um, staff did well and uh, they handled everything again it's it's just room it's just crowded in that control room uh, there's so much congestion in that control room when when we have so many multiple arrests and this weekend the uh, university police arrested six at a time and brought in six of us, six at one time, that gets to be a little much. Well, you know, I, luckily I had a third person, and um, they, were, they got them six in and out in about an hour and a half. So they were misdemeanor arrests, you know, so they don't stay, uh, but they got to be booked in and, and processed and fingerprinted and taken a mug shot. And staff did well, but it's, again, it's the congestion in that area. Also, uh, on game day, on... It was uh, the national take back, drug take back at uh, Walmart, and I was out there for four hours doing that. And, uh, um, you know, considering with everything going on, uh, got about 40 pounds of unused medicine was brought while I was out there. So, I'm, you know, that's 40 more pounds that, that's out of people's medicine cabinets. So, anyway, so that's, uh, I thought that was pretty good considering everything that was going on. Also, we've had a couple instances of like Sinai. Cyan and um, um, highway, uh, highway Superintendent is aware of the situation, too. It's really Lake Oakwood's uh, township. But, uh, uh, you know, individuals are looking for a way to get around 80, 81, so they're, so they're trying to find their own detours. Well, two of them found themselves in Lake Sinai. Coming down, they turned off or, or came down 457, and uh, it was at night after dark, and... Uh, um, Ended up, both vehicles ended up in Friday night, there was one in Lake Sinai, or say Saturday night, one in Lake Sinai, and then one on Sunday. And uh, there was a sign out there that says road closed, but apparently the, the sign was down. Um, that's been fixed back up. And also, uh, uh, Lake Oakwood Township had ordered signs to put up in that mile, too, you know, dead end, no, you know. Uh, so, but what they're doing is they're trying to find a detour, and they don't, they should know where they're at, but at night you may not. And uh, it uh, could have been a could have been worse, but uh, um, but they both ended up in the water anyway. So um, other than that, I can't think of anything unless you guys have some questions. Yeah, no, we it's. Yeah, we're fine as far as the county. It's it's a town, township issue, but uh, um, they, they, they and they're going to sign it better. You know, I don't know if if uh, um, four fifty seven runs into uh, state property basically. You know where the boat landing is, and so you got a you got a mile of road kind of a mile of road, and then it goes into state property, and then there was a road close sign in the state property side. Uh, but that sign was down at the, at the particular time, and if you're, if you're not paying attention, and 
and uh, um, they went into the water. But uh, talking with uh, with the township supervisor, they're going to they're going to sign that mile better, you know, so they give them, especially with all this unusual traffic, you know, due due to the eighty one uh, closure. So people are just trying to. You know, the official detour is, is I-29 to 90, you know. Um, and then on 90, it's 29 to 14 to, to 81 and then going, uh, going north. So they're, they're trying to, to find their own way around. And if they're making right turns and left turns, and then all of a sudden, at, at night, you don't know where you're at. And, and actually, the highway department, on, I think it's on 213, the highway department actually has a road close sign up on 213. You know, so, uh, so we're, I think as far as the, and you're right, when, when it's time to go for a lawsuit, it's everybody. I mean, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter who in particular, the township or the county or the sheriff's office. You know, I mean, they can, you know, why didn't, why didn't I know about this? I mean, it all can be, all of us can be involved, so. I think it's just good to give you a heads up so you know that, that you know, there's been a couple of things um, in, in uh, uh, there's been a thing on Kello, I think, you know, briefly. And uh, uh, so, it, yeah. So. As far as the county, Brian, we're okay with our signage? I've been working with the township. Uh, also, I've been working uh with the state officials to the GFP, they've contacted me also about what we could do different out there. Um, we've also closed our County Road 10. That's just north of where the flooded portion of 81 is, an effort to try to keep, you know, out-of-town traffic off of that. Uh, but there again, like we said, it or Marty mentioned is the, the signs had either blown down or or weren't maintained and, and now they're back up. They've gotten posts from the highway department to, to fix their signs up and or put some new signs up. So no, the township's been putting their signs up. Been getting the Is your microphone on? Yeah. Try to pull it yeah. up closer. I yeah. just got. Yep. I just got. <coughs> Sorry about notice that. Notice that we're not hearing you in the back. So, I I I think it's great for us to lend signs, help out, give give some suggestions, but that from a liability perspective, and maybe Dan has some opinions on this, we would not want to be putting any signs up for the townships because of the liability issue for who installs the signs. <coughs> Yeah, any other comments? I've just been providing the the materials for them to put up. That's great. You know that flashing, don't you have one flashing sign that? And we've t discussed that too, uh, about possibly putting some sort of an advanced warning sign with, with a flashing light. Uh, but talking with the township officials, their concern was too is we're getting into that time of year where the, it's going to be hard for them to maintain, and just having the sign up, in their opinion, was was kind of the direction they decided to go. So, but it is a an option for them. Okay. Any other comments? Anyone? Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Marty. Vicky, we'll have your finance report, please. Good morning. Good morning. We got through another tax season. Everything went smooth and um, no major issues at all. Uh, we will be sending out delinquent letters probably next week so that 
We will let everybody know if they haven't paid taxes, they will be getting a letter in the mail. And this week, um, well, actually leaving today, will be Jenna and Kristen are going to a lection workshop out in Pierre for two days, for Wednesday and Thursday. And then on Friday, Lori and Jennifer from our office are going to a debit credit workshop put on by um, Rod Fortin. So they will be out there Friday. So we'll be a little short in our offices, but they will be attending that training. And um, the auditors, the state auditors for right now, they have moved to USD because that audit had to be done, and they also are short people at legislative audit. So they still have all their things here. They are not done with the audit, but they've moved down to USD and will be back when that audit is done. And maybe if somebody has time, they'll come in and do a few things in the meantime, but everything's still set up down there. And I've got the levies in for approval from the state and also working on special assessments, getting those done for the end of the year. And um, to let you know too, we had um, the city came and borrowed three precinct signs. They're like 30 by 30 metal signs for game day. And they ended up, unbeknownst to us, um, lending them to SDSU and two of the three got lost or stolen. So they are still looking for them, but they, according to our agreement, they will have to replace those. So we are working with the city to, you know, make sure we get the right signs replaced and everything. So that is something we'll mm -hmm. continue to work on until we get that done. And I guess that other than that, we don't have anything new if you have any questions. Sorry, questions for Vicki. Seeing none, thank you, Vicki. Thanks. Mr. Hill, I have your report next. Good morning. Good morning. The uh, National Weather Service held a, a session on October 24th down at the Aero Status Center. That was well attended by local emergency managers, school districts, and members of the uh, meteorologists from all the radio and TV stations. And uh, that was an interesting session. FirstNet set a temporary cell phone tower up for the South Dakota State, North Dakota State game on Saturday, October 26th. That um, the messages that came out, it sounds like the State troopers are on FirstNet and, and some of the other first responders at the state and federal level that um, it was only there for a certain period of time, then they pulled that back down. So I stayed back since that was up, and we do have a FirstNet hotspot for the emergency management office, and we're about ready to switch over my cell phone at least to the FirstNet system, and uh, I'll find out more information about that next month or later, later this month. October 29th, FEMA reviewed our county claims for the fl flood blizzard event. I signed the final paperwork yesterday and we emailed that into them. So at the next commission meeting, we should be able to tell you how much money FEMA is going to assist us with by reimbursing us some money. We also check with FEMA and it's hard to get information out of them on what they're doing with the townships, but we'll see what we can do. And, We'll try to get you a report on how many townships have been reviewed. Some of them come to our office and meet to the, in the meeting room next to mine, and other townships meet them out, out in the township. So we'll try to get you an updated report on that there. Tonight, we have a planning meeting. starts at 7 p.m. We had a pretty controversial conditional use permit being applied for. That has been pulled verbally on the telephone. As soon as we get email confirmation, we'll send that out through, um, we'll put that on the web and everything else. But they, it looks like they're gonna pull the conditional use permit that was causing some heartburn in the community. And um, we'll keep an eye on that. I mean, obviously they can reapply at a later date, but uh, at this time that one's gonna be pulled. I've got a winter weather briefing at the Multicultural Center this, at, this evening at 6 p.m. And I'm taking the, the state of South Dakota sends out a winter weather guide 
once a year, and I'm taking copies of that over there and uh, speak to them. I'll, we'll take some of the equipment we got downstairs to show them what a winter survival kit and a vehicle should look like and, and items like that. Basin Electric Power Cooperative has a briefing on November 12th. Local fire departments in their coverage area will either be there on November 12th or a, they set up a different date, like the White Fire Department. Sometimes they set up a separate date. The November 12th date, I believe, is for the <coughs> Brookings Fire Department. But other, they have other safety briefings once a year. November 18th, 211 Center down in Sioux Falls is going to have a um, disaster planning meeting. I plan on sending Richard down to that. And uh, on the back side of my report, I gave you an updated list of all my, my staff's training. The drainage on Madary Township, I've been attempting to contact the chairman of the, of the board, still waiting to get back to him. Me and Richard was discussing that. We are going to see, a lot of it's going to depend on what FEMA's been doing with the township. And we're going to see if we can't slide that into possibly get some FEMA money to help us do a mitigation. To start the plan, you have to, have to start somewhere. And we was talking yesterday, and it came up, well, that might be a good mitigation project to at least get some, get some legwork done for us. So that's what we're, we're attempting to do. And we'll keep updating you as we go along on that. Any questions? Any questions? Commissioner Pierce. Have you heard anything about the census? I have not, ma'am. I will have to. <clears throat> Any other questions for Mr. Hill? I'll, I'll check the census out and give, give an email out later. later. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, we've got just a few minutes yet here, John, before we get to you. So we'll uh, do a little regular business here so we keep you on time at 9 o'clock. Item uh, 8A is an action to approve resolution number 19-51, a resolution authorizing the sale of surplus property by auction. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Any comments? Uh, Jenna, do we want to, any comments on the surplus? I don't know anything about this. Okay. This was the uh, property auction that took place over in Aurora oh, okay, in October. One. Yeah. Um, I think that was, it was discussed at the last meeting as well. Yes, well. This yeah. is just the resolution that officially makes that, approves that sale. Any other comments? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Borsma? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Item B is an action to approve agreement number 19-77, an agreement between Pictometry International Corp and Brookings County and amending agreement number 18-61. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion been made and second. Any comments? You have a report on this one? If you read my staff report, um, this was a request specifically from BMU, one of the partners with the pictometry. They wanted, um, they're requesting that the files that, for the imagery be sent to them in a different format that wasn't part of the original agreement. There's no cost change to this at this time. Um, and then the county, the city, and E911 would also have the option of getting that digital format that they're requesting as well. But because this was, this original contract was approved by the board last year, we wanted to bring the change even though there was no cost <coughs> change involved back to you for approval. Any other comments or questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Item C is action to approve and authorize Chairperson Bartley to sign a quit claim deed. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Any comments? This is the property in Elkton that um, the county gave, or not gave, the city of Elkton paid the back taxes on that. So this is just to um, deed it over to them. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? If not, we'll call the roll. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Forsma? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. IMD is an action to approve an automatic supplement in the amount of $4,630.98 for a reimbursement from insurance. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any comments? Just an insurance reimbursement for a claim. Any comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. 
Item E is an action to approve funding for the Christmas Kids and Cops program. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion been made and seconded. And a report on this Christmas Kids and Cops. How much is the Comments. amount that we're approving in, in that motion? Yeah, I, I think you need to come up with a dollar amount before. We've done $500. I think my staff report for the past four years, we've done $500 for the program. Um, we do have a thousand dollars left in the public relations line, so there is that there is money available to do this. I'll make a motion for five hundred dollars. Second. Okay, I'm going to call that an amendment to the motion. Any comments on the amendment to the motion of five hundred dollars? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Pierce. Aye. Forsma. Aye. Krogman. Aye. Jensen. Aye. Bartley. Aye. Amendment carries. We will now vote on the motion as amended for $500 for the Christmas Kids and Cops program. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Forsma? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. And we're getting close here. We've got a bunch of a board appointments here. We'll take each one, uh, each board separately. So on your item F, we'll start one or two here, and then we'll get, get John up here. Uh, first one is the Brookings Health System Board of Trustees, one position, a three-year term. We have one applicant, Sheila Anderson. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. I'll make a motion to appoint Sheila Anderson. Second. Motion was made and seconded to appoint Sheila Anderson. Are there any comments or questions? Yeah, I've served on that board for a while. She's, she's been on there. She's uh, done a very good job. Um, she travels a lot for her work, but really makes a, an effort to be there or by phone and uh, <clears throat> with her experience and as the CFO, she brings a lot of knowledge to that board. So it's, uh, I would certainly think we should uh, approve Sheila again because she is an asset to that board. So, yeah. Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of the appointment say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. The extension <coughs> board item two is a, a six position, one year terms. We have Deborah Ford, Ron Parmley, Jennifer Pickard, Rhonda Houtman, Stuart Houtman, and Richard Waldner, uh, we do not have all six. We have one of uh, no applicant by the deadline, so we'll be re-advertising that. Uh, is there a motion to approve the appointments? So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Any comments on the appointments? Oh, I think all of these are incumbents. Do they have served on the board? Correct. Yeah. So, yes. So they're reappointments, basically. Yep. Okay. Any questions or comments on it? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. I have three is planning and zoning commission, two positions, four year terms. We need Jensen in district two and Tom Davis in district four. Is there a motion to approve the appointments? So moved. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Any comments on those appointments? I'll just say that both of those individuals served on the board the four years I was on they do a good job I don't know if Bob wants to add anything besides that but Mr. Davis is moving up from an alternate position so mm -hmm. that's correct uh, or has moved up already from an alternate position yeah we we he, you up. actually appointed him to fill yep. the unexpired uh, an unexpired term and now he's reapplying for a full term any other comments hearing none all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed nay motion carries you know what, John? It's nine o'clock. We're gonna have you come on up. And let me flip all this back here. Nine o'clock is an update on the South Highway 77 bridge projects with John Ritter's house from the South Dakota Department of Transportation. And you had in your packet uh, an update also. So the floor is yours. All right. Uh, Brian asked me to come here and give you guys an update on uh, two county structures. Uh, County Highway 77 south of Brookings. Obviously, the structures have not been completed. They were originally scheduled for uh, November 1st completion date. Contractors started on these structures uh, prior to the river opening, uh, beginning of March. Uh, follow, following the river opening in March, which was probably uh, pretty close to the 26th or 27th of March. He's only been able to work three weeks from that time span till now. 
So therein lays the problem with the, you know, the work obviously not getting done. And uh, that is all due to the high water level we've experienced this year. Um, the coffer dams that he has designed uh, for the substructure work are able to withstand about an eight foot water level. Currently we're at 8.04, so he's planning to pump, pump the coffer dams out and start work again uh, tentatively tomorrow. Um, but uh, the thing to keep in mind is, you know, he's right at the threshold, so you get one precip event and then all of a sudden we're over topping those again. Um, and that, that's kind of been the problem. We've either been at flood level or just below flood level the entire season this year. And uh, so our central office, we've been dealing, dealing with this throughout the, the state of South Dakota this year on multiple projects and uh, a lot of structure projects. Uh, and through the governor's office and meetings with AGC, Federal Highway, um, we were given directive to extend the completion dates on these projects. So this project was given uh, extension to August 15th of 2020. Um, and right now the contractor, uh, speaking on his half, he wasn't able to be here today, but uh, he is planning to work throughout the winter on these structures. Uh, He's going to work on the small one first and get that completed so he can have access on both sides of the, 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 lar the larger bridge. Um, so he'll do heating, housing, and whatever it takes to get uh, that thing done. And like I say, with, with August 15, 2020 completion date, uh, you know, he's obviously shooting for that. Hopefully we'll be done ahead of time. but. There again, it depends on the weather. We're going into the winter with water levels right at or right below flood stage. So if we get any amount of precip this winter, you know, we could be looking at another season like we had this year. Hopefully we won't, but uh, you know, that remains to be seen. If we have flood waters extending into next year like we did this year, you know, there's a possibility this thing, you know, we could be staring at things like we are right now going into next season. Um, I'm hopeful, you know, that we won't, but, you know, just throwing that out there that that possibility is, is there. Um, like I say, I think the river level, I, I've never seen it stay sustained at the level it's been at this year. Um, Obviously, you know, I don't think anybody else has either, but uh, those coffer dams are pretty much designed for a certain level, you know, and, and uh, if they were to make it a lar larger coffer dam, they'd have to go through a whole new re redesign process, and, you know, we're talking a fairly deep hole there as is now, so you know, there becomes a safety issue also. So um, I guess, you know, if you guys got any questions, I'll try to answer them or, or address them. I know everyone's probably been taking calls from people. I, I know I've taken quite a few calls from people wondering what's going on out there, why they're not working. Um, and I've done my best to explain it. And, uh, you know, it's just, just one of them things. This is not isolated in the state right now. We got numerous bridges, like I say, that are not completed and it's due to the high water. Questions? Yeah. Has the contractor mentioned other projects they have? Are they going to be pushed back too? I mean, because we've got, you know, potential bidding and different things, structures that are coming up for next spring that we, you know, want to get planned. But because of this process or are people not bidding or are they saying, you know what, we're not even going to bid new stuff because we can't get our old stuff done? Yeah, right now it, it could cut down on the number of guys able to bid projects because they're trying to finish up these projects that were supposed to be done this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, 
I, I like like I say this this guy it's going to eat into his work next year so it, right. it could probably prevent him from bidding maybe say one additional structure next year. Um, I know there's a number of guys that do this type of work so obviously you're, you're still going to get bids but uh, you know as, as far as the competitiveness of the bids you start taking a few players out of there yeah you, you could maybe see it. Uh, an issue there, but uh, right now we have not seen that. As we look at constructing this over the winter time, uh, obviously they're going to have to deal with ice, going to have to deal with cold weather, and trying to pour concrete and house it. How does that work? I mean, are we going to be able to pour a deck in the middle of the winter out there? Because I don't think I've ever seen that done in the winter time, and I suppose it's entirely possible. But I don't understand. Yeah, oh, that first structure is a fairly short one. Yeah. So typically we do not pour ridge decks in the wintertime, but that one is short enough that, and he has the capability of housing it and heating it. Um, and he would try to pick a, you know, a, a day where the temperatures are somewhat conducive. And, you know, we, we add hot water to the concrete and uh, it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, and the substructure work, we have done that numerous times throughout the winter, worked on these things in the winter. And that, that typically is not too difficult because they're formed up, they're down, you know, low on the ground, and you can house those fairly easy because they're a lot smaller area. When they get to the longer bridge, if they get this one finished, will they be able to start the coffer dams on the other side? Or are they going to yes. get that ripped out? This one completely to get equipment across. Then... Would they still be trying to do that this winter yet? Definitely. That's the plan. Hopefully. Try to get it done before the spring flooding hits again. At least again. get the substructure work done. Um, that's going to be kind of pushing it here because, you know, we're obviously in the November. We're probably looking uh, February sometime maybe uh, on the bridge deck on that short one. So that does not leave a whole lot of time on on that long one. Granted, he may be able to do some substructure work on, uh, say, the north side of that uh, longer one while he's still working on the small one. So we basically just wait until spring and find find out what the weather <laughs> what the weather does for us as far as snow precipitation and melt and runoff, and then worry about spring rains. Commissioner Pierce, you had a question. I do. Um, the routing of people that are are going particularly in the Lake Campbell area uh, on that road. Is the south end now of um, the county portion of 471? If I got my number right, I call it old Highway 77. Okay, has that been opened up for, for traffic? It's not opened up. There's equipment and materials out on that road. It's somewhat of a, a staging area. Mm -hmm. The barricades are placed such that they're staggered. So people are able to meander their way through, and they have been. They have been doing that since it was closed. Um, and, uh, you know, there's going to come a point in time when he starts working on these and he gets on that south side that possibly equipment and materials may be in the way and totally prevent that from people getting through there. They're, they're driving around the barricades is what what's happening right, and right that's now. That's what I noticed this yes. weekend, and I wondered if, if that's okay, if, if we're wanting to discourage that, does something need to be done? The contractor hasn't made a big issue of it right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously they stagger the barricades for their own guys when they're working out there to get in and out. Mm -hmm. um, and and with, with the way things are out there right now, you know, it, it, it's passable, so he has not totally block things off there per se with the barricades because they're, having they're that option is huge for people i mean that's yes. that's a huge thing and if it's not a safety factor what my concern was is right now you don't have to worry about somebody running into the water because the bridge is gone when it's pitch black outside because of that equipment sitting there is that going to be there all winter then or yes that okay. that equipment should be there all okay <clears throat> Thank you. Richard John, some questions? John, with the added work with the heating and such and the heated concrete, uh, 
you anticipate any extra cost to the county? I that that was another thing that may come up. The contractor has not brought it up, but uh, obviously his productivity is going to go down working through the winter. But his costs are going to go up too. You know, with a, a little bit of cost for uh, additional heating, there there is that chance that he may may throw a claim in for additional costs due to to the, the weather and having to work through the winter. Um, he has not brought that up yet, though. Is there a chance that um, the intersection that you were talking about, that if we get that south bridge completed, that we could open up that corner there and put barriers and so to, to stop people, but we could then open that corner up for people to go through? They probably could temporarily. Um, there is grading and uh, some embankment work that's got to happen there for the approaches and, and uh, guardrail and whatnot. Uh, granted, there's probably going to be a little bit of lag time in between there, so you know there is a possibility, but time span wise, I'm not sure how long that would be feasible. Okay. And, and what that looks like is where that intersection is 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 it is some distance from the bridge and the people that are driving through but it's before they obviously get to the bridges that they're going through M my concern was that maybe there needed to be more that when when it's pitch black outside like it is right now that you if you're not somebody knowledgeable about that that you know that that bridge is out not the people that are turning to go but somebody that's coming down 77 and thinking they're going to go straight because, like you said, the barricades are going like this. Yeah, you got to physically almost come to, I would say, less than five miles an hour to go around, to straddle around the barricades. So, um, liability wise, I would say if you're driving around the barricades, that liability becomes yours. You're, you're driving through a road closed. Uh, I'm going to say this I was a passenger. Yep. And a person did that. I didn't know we were going that route on Saturday night. Okay. All right. There were no barricades to meander around, and the driver did not slow down to five miles an hour. And I said, I think this road is blocked off, but there were no barricades there. And that the driver said to me, no, that's been opened up to drive on. And I said, I don't think so. So whatever we're doing out there right now is not clear to the general public and if it doesn't matter if people are making that turn, then we just need to block off more a little bit further north and make it clear because that was somewhat frightening to me when I'm sitting in the car and all of a sudden driving on something that I thought we were not supposed to be driving on. Yeah, and I haven't been on that south end lately. You might want to look. There, there should be barricades that are staggered there on yeah. both locations once you get down close to the structure so well one of them got hit by something and tore it apart uh, that tried to get around it with too large a vehicle I'm gonna assume so I mean I saw uh, a grain truck make that corner with a, a pup on the back and I thought that was really interesting that they didn't go into the ditch when they went around it but uh, yeah, there's some barricades out there. There's one way up at the uh, Coleman corner there, the signing at corner. There's a road closed sign mm -hmm. uh, if you turn south on that one, or north, I mean. So the, there are some signs, but as you say, sometimes it's hard to maintain them. And you couldn't see with, anything. It was so dark. So, you know, I guess, you know, on that aspect, we can make sure, and we can just totally block it off of barricades, and then that, nobody's going to get through there, and period, and that's the way the project was set up begin with and, and if we're going all winter that maybe is not the best way to do it better way would be just that little bit further north when you're past that intersection to really be sure we've got that mark that you can't drive there because like I said I was looking because I didn't think people were supposed to be driving there and there were vehicles mm -hmm. going through there so yep. <clears throat> Yeah, the contractor has been pretty gracious about keeping mm -hmm. equipment out of the way for most of the people who live in that area who want, want to travel that road. But and the general that traffic's not supposed to be because of the conundrum of who who knows it and who doesn't and who's using that road. So it's uh, it's an issue. I 
we we'll assume that the staging area is not that big there, that it will be closed when they start All right. construction here and moving equipment and girders back in again. So I had some there that I know they moved out, some metal, and then they brought it, they got to bring it back. You know. But if Whether we don't they used it somewhere else or what they did with the metal, but it's been in and out of there a couple of times. So it's, a, it, it's you know, there was even suggestions of trying to uh, do a temporary intersection to the uh, to the southwest to allow cars to go around it. And I said, well, that's pretty much all swamp area too. It would be very expensive to try and build a temporary road around that corner. So that's probably not going to happen. But then that subject came up again when it was discussed that this could be a, another year or even two if we don't have a, a, a cooperative spring <laughs> flooding. So is that a possibility that we would make a temporary uh, approach, I guess you'd call it, around that corner curve? I, I kind of highly doubt that. You be know, expensive. Unless it really got pushed, you know, but then again, you're, you're looking at uh, pushing some, something out, and I don't know if there's wetland classifications around there, so therefore you can't throw fill in there, but uh, if you look at the detour, there is a, that, that particular area has a very good detour, and you're probably talking only four miles out of your way. It's basically all paved over to the interstate, yeah. and it's just to the fact that people are choosing not to go that route. Granted, there's a few locals that live along here that need to get into their places, um, but that would be the exception. So, you know, uh, if the, if there's a major issue, like I say, uh, you know, and and uh, make sure these guys got the barricades and they're staggered, but uh, you know, this thing was set to be closed off. You know, and then I just say they barricade it off and leave it at that. I'm going to guess that's what you're going to get to yep. pretty quickly is just barricading yeah, the, it the off. Yeah, the contractor is going to eventually be into that working with equipment and everything that, it, you, you know, you're not going to want cars running through you there anyhow. Okay. So. The people traveling to the west don't have great do detour. <laughs> that, that's why they're doing that. But it's a lot harder if, if you live to the west. Any we other just comments don't want anybody questions? to get hurt. Oh, well, we appreciate the report. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it a lot. Thank you very much. Our next scheduled agenda item is until 9.30, so we'll move back to our regular business. And we're at item four, which is Planning and Zoning Commission, an alternate. We have two positions with three-year terms. We have one applicant, Roger Erickson. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion made and seconded. Any comments on that appointment? Just he's been the alternate for a long time. He comes to all the meetings and does a good job. Yes. Clarify, Bob, alternates, do they have to be from a certain district or? No, sir, they're at large. Any other questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Appointments made. Item five is the Weed and Pest Board. There's two positions, three year terms. We have Timothy P. Bauer and Randy Meyer, which is a resident in the city limits. Is there a motion to approve? So move. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and second. Any comments on the two appointees? They're current members. Yes. No comments. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Appointments passed. Item six is Housing and Redevelopment Commission is one position, a five-year term. We have no applicant. Item seven is Brookings Human Rights Commission. We have one position for a three-year term, and we have no applicant by the deadline. I assume we will re-advertise those positions. Yes, we will be working on getting a new advertisement out for the extension board, the one position. Since the deadline, we have had an application for that position, but it did come in after the deadline, so that one will get added into any others that we may get. Also, there's the one alternate position on planning and zoning, as well as housing and redevelopment and human rights. So um, we'll work on getting those filled. Just as a side note to the uh, BCOAC advisory board, those are one-year appointments. The application deadline was uh, last Friday, I believe. And so we'll look at making those appointments on the 19th of November as well. So. Okay. Any other question on appointments? John, we'll move on to item G, which is a review of our updated work plan. Stacy generally goes over that with us. Things are, are uh, in 
brown. So <clears throat> kind of this dark it kind of shows up as a burgundy brown color on, on the computer. Um, just kind of going down the list. We did receive that construction update just now from DOT on the, on the um, river bridges. Nothing else has, has changed too much um, with that. The five-year plan has now been approved. Um, the Basin Electric Bridge, I believe, is now finished and open. The 2019 budget on there, um, we did have the second round of applications that were approved for our Township Grant Culvert Program. Um, you can see that we approved just shy of $63,000. And I know Brian has been reviewing some of those projects now that are, they have been able to get done and we do um, have some funds that will be, some reimbursement funds that will be approved at the next meeting on the 19th. And we have budgeted $100,000 again for 2020 to do another type of grant program. If we wanna do something similar to what we did this year, that will be a discussion at that time. Moving on, the jail expansion, advertising for the construction manager. We're working with BKV on finalizing design development, starting construction documents. Joint jurisdiction committee, the update was that the um, committee is, is finished with their work. They did approve the ordinance on September 19th and sent that on now to city, both city and county planning and zoning commissions for review and approval. My understanding is that Luke Muller with First District is going to have some joint meetings with that group, so they're both hearing the same information at the same time. Um, from there, once that's approved at that level, then that moves on to the City Council and the County Commission. I think Luke was hoping that County, uh, county Commission members and City Council members maybe come to some of those discussion, um, some of those discussions with the Planning Commission so that they're hearing that information so it's not all brand new and maybe doing some joint meetings on that ordinance with city council and county commission as well. So I'll kind of keep you posted as we move forward on that. Um, the mental health task force, they wrapped up uh, their, their work on back in July. And I know they're um, looking forward, they have a community coalition group now and it has taken over for the task force and is moving this topic forward in the community. And I, and I believe Commissioner Borsma has been going and attending those meetings because she was the um, commissioner on the mental health task force. So I think come January when we're making board and committee appointments, that community coalition will replace the, um, the mental health task force on that, that list. BCOAC, the parking lot project is underway. If you have driven past or been out there recently, there's some asphalt in the parking lot. It looks fantastic. So that's um, uh, moving forward. I didn't have anything new to add with beta. Um, I didn't know if, if Ryan, if there was anything new from what I had. I think we're still in that process of um, looking for a new location. I don't, yeah. Been in discussion with the uh, uh, Brooklyn School Board, yeah. <clears throat> the Brooklyn School District on a joint location, and so how do you, if you just want to add that. Okay. On, on the, on the, I that's add. that's the direction they're going to be focusing on. Sure. Uh, this year, this next year is that uh, joint facility with Brooklyn School, and we're going to uh, hire a consultant uh, to see if that can be worked out. And if it does, that's where we'll continue to move forward. If it does not, they will look in a different direction. But if you want to add that joint facility with them is probably their focus. Okay. Union negotiations. Uh, we did adopt the contracts uh, back in July, and those will take effect. Uh, the three-year contracts starting January 1 of 2020. I didn't have anything additional for the bike trail. Um, I don't know if there was anything that anybody wanted to add to that. Um, nothing new with the overpass. Analyze. Just, oh. just on the overpass, I'd just tell yeah. everybody that um, right now um, the federal government transportation department, they're reviewing those, and we're, we think perhaps 
people will know, entities will know if they made the first cut maybe within the next couple of weeks. So. We'll add that. Analyzing and updating ordinances, there was nothing new there. Um, we have been continuing to do that on our website, and I knew that, that the new state statute that went in effect, and we were able to, to meet that. Nothing new with the small towns and school districts meetings. Um, Self-evaluation of the county, working through that Communities of Excellence program. I know Ryan's been attending those. I thought... No, he has not been attending those. Um, and you're supposed to tell me when you don't go because I'm your alternate. <laughs> and he's not been telling his alternate that he hasn't been attending those. <laughs> um, was there something coming up this month about a community? Um, was that November 18th? Did it's I the, if I did like a community? It's the same day as the 10 county meeting. Oh. Okay. We're having a presentation for vision bookings on, on uh, I don't remember the day on that, but uh, they are going to present after their first years, the first full year, uh, they're going to pre present what they've done so far to uh, vision bookings. Um, so they're doing one of their meet afternoon meetings for vision bookings. I misspoke. That's not the Communities of Excellence Day. It's not the same day as 10 County meeting. That's a different thing. Never mind. The community sure. of excellence is something different. Yep, never mind. Is that through the chamber? Is that through BDC? Do you know? I could get, I could Which contact one? you. The communities of excellence. BDC. 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 That's BDC, okay. I'll see if I can't get some more information on that. So, Stacy, under this number 12, self-evaluation of county's organization, I'd like to add in um, perhaps us taking some time to review you know, five years ago, the county adopted kind of a new structure when we had some staff turnover and you uh, started your new position and, and all of that. I'd like us to spend some time talking about how the county commission department um, operates and, and whether we like that new format or if we need to do any tweaking now that we're five years into that. Would the rest of you be interested in having a conversation like that? It's always good to discuss it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Humane Society, we just have um, nothing new there, just budgeted 10000 That was approved for the 2020 annual budget. Uh, drainage, I think Bob had just said that he is, um, had nothing new, but he had said he's been trying to reach out and make some contact there um, to, for, to, put, to move that forward. Madari Monument, I think I believe I added that this time um, now that we own that structure and I know there was some discussion on repairs and maintenance and working with um, the DAR chapter here to get that done. I don't know if you've had any updates on that, Angie, no? Okay. Um, and then the other item that I added was Samara Avenue uh, through Volga is that we've had a couple of discussions with the city in whether or not the city is going to take over that road. Um, there's that, there is a, there's the committee, Commissioners Bartley and Jensen. I believe Brian has reached out to state DOT to kind of look at that process of what that would take to um, have the county give that or transfer that road over to the city of Volga. So we're waiting to hear back from them and from uh, the state, and then we'll start moving that conversation forward again, so. Other than that, that's all I had, unless you had anything else to add to this or wanted to discuss. On item number, which one's the jail? Um, on item number two, I think we need to add in a C that says that we're um, waiting for court resolution on the disputes with the city of Brookings. Okay. Anything else? I just want to say I'm quietly optimistic on the 20th Street interchange. <laughs> How's that? All right, any other comments on the work plan? 
Hearing none, we're going to move on to our next regularly scheduled item on the agenda at 9.30 is Trenton Township, a discussion and possible action to provide financial assistance to the township. A representative or two or three from uh, Trenton Township will be discussing real conditions and the township's financial uh, situation. So we're going to allow that discussion to go first before we take any possible action. Please, guys, there's one microphone. It's hot. If you kind of throw it in the middle and share it a little bit, start out by introducing yourself so we know who you are. I'm supervisor, Trenton Township. Cody Clark, supervisor. Rod Brandenburg, supervisor. All right, so somebody will take the lead. If you got the materials, pass out first. Or... So I guess I drew the short straw here for being the person that's going to talk today. Um, as you guys know, uh, we had a pretty heavy snowfall last uh, winter for the 18-19 season. Um, on that top form there, you can see the Trenton Township uh, financials over expenses that we went through. Uh, there was a typo on the top that said 2018, that is for 2019. If you look down on the left side there. Uh, goes through from January till pretty current uh, date on that. We've spent approximately 100000 from January of 18 through now. Uh, and that was in the repairs for the flood damage that happened in April. Um, we have that approximately back to about 80% uh, after that flood damage of what we would like to see our township as far as culverts, gravel, uh, some of the roadways, ditches were washed out, so we had to bring in some uh, fill, uh, some uh, oversized rock, and then uh, a fair amount of gravel. Uh, and then there was the expenses of having uh, either Faber or Ostrom uh, lay that back down again. Um, backing up a little bit, you can see the snow removal costs in February, uh, in March there from Faber, and, and then it switched over, Ostrom bought out Faber. Um, so there is a fair amount of snow removal expenses. Then we got the spring thaw, the rain uh, that happened in April and, and washed out uh, a majority of our roads. Uh, we looked, we have 21 miles of in our township that are in that floodplain for Madary Creek and Deer Creek that come together. Um, so out of the 35 miles that we gravel, 21 of those miles were in the, in the floodplain. Um, if you look down through that, there should be a map in there uh, that has all of the areas that we either had washed out culverts or gravel or, or uh, sub uh, material that was washed out. Um, culverts got washed out this year, ones that we'd had replaced last year, they got washed out again. Uh, so we had to have some customers out there in in our township that were actually walking across ladders to get to a car parked on the other side to be able to get to town for approximately three weeks until we were able to get those repairs made and, and back in order. So uh, not something that we're proud of, especially if we would have had an ambulance call or a fire call uh, to those. There would have been no way we would have been able to get any equipment into uh, into their yard to help for a structure fire or something of that sort. So. Um, and then going back to the other pages, the second page there, uh, it shows the, the deposits that we've brought in uh, for the year were approximately 55,000, so about half of what we spent uh, this year so far. Um, there's county deposits from you guys uh, that we get a monthly stipend, uh, and we should be getting another one coming in, in uh, November here pretty quick, uh, which should bring our checkbook balance up to approximately $4,500 uh, right now. If you look down below that, there's still bills to be paid to Ostrom and Sturzinger. Uh, that's $7,800 there that we're in the hole right now with that. 
and they just bladed again last weekend. Um, so there's going to be another approximately 2,000 uh, in blading and some repairs that they did last weekend. So uh, we're looking at $10,000 there that we have for bills to be paid at this time. Um, and that doesn't include the 80% that we're trying to repair or the 20% we're still trying to repair from April. And then you've probably also heard about the 9-11-9-12 uh, flood. The, the 10 inches of rain that we got in our township over in that area basically destroyed what we had put back together in May and June. Um, so we've, we've kind of patched some of those spots back together uh, so that we can make sure that we get fire and, and ambulance to those areas, but there's a lot of areas that we haven't been able to bring back up to. And we're a little concerned right now of, of uh, we had snowflakes in the air the last couple weeks already. So we're, we're concerned about what are we gonna do for snow removal this year? Uh, there's spots on 214, 215, and 216 uh, that they're basically black dirt right now. And some of those are areas that are approaching the Aurora Tar. Uh, I had a phone call over the weekend that said, uh, hey, if we get any amount of moisture on that, that black dirt, are we gonna be able to stop for that stop sign going onto the Aurora Tar? Um, the Bose Corner um, down here uh, on 215 uh, coming into town, that's another black spot there that we would like to get gravel down and repaired before winter sets in. Um, LG Everest has been good. They've been helping us out on, on their corner up there and, and uh, repaired a lot of that road damage, um, partially due to the flooding and partially uh, their own uh, truck and travel and stuff in that, through that area. So I guess um, you guys can see the, the financials of our, where we're sitting at in this uh, situation. Um, and we have uh, asked assistance from uh, um, Al Kurtenbach, uh, requested some gravel down uh, by his area there. And uh, he actually uh, opted to float us a loan too for that. Um, so that's part of that $7,800 down there that is that. Um, but we have been uh, working with Sturzinger and with uh, Ostrom. They've been gracious enough to, to hold those bills until we can get some financial assistance from someplace, somewhere. You guys have anything else to add? What, what do you have for estimate total to FEMA for uh, reimbursement? Well, if you, on that roadmap or the one that's up on the board there now, uh, that was uh, estimated uh, through Bob Hill's office at uh, seventy-one or seventy-two thousand dollars in damages for that. Um, and then when we did the repairs, uh, we had sixty-eight thousand uh, dollars that uh, we came up with the repairs that we did. Uh, and with FEMA, you have to have the project 100% completed and you have to have uh, uh, bills showing that, even though that there's a estimate of 72, uh, we're at 68. So that's what we're kind of waiting for to return from FEMA also. And that's, that's from the April damage, that's not from the September damage. Bob, do you have any comments on FEMA and what we can expect? You know, FEMA's FEMA's in our in the county, and they're they're tackling every township individually with the township officials. And this township has met with them in, in my office at least twice that I know of. And uh, there's no timeline on when they're going to release the money to us. Okay. But there is a. a Eventually, the township will get the sixty-eight thousand that they actually spent. It's just a matter of when. Is that what you're correct? Saying? So and what happens is the township submits paperwork, and then FEMA takes a look at it. And you know, the township may say, "Well, I'm putting down four inches of gravel," and FEMA may only authorize two inches of gravel. So I would have to say no. You, you know, if, because they spent sixty-eight thousand dollars, may not be what FEMA reimburses. It just depends on what. FEMA's formula is on that type of road and how much gravel FEMA is going to authorize to be put on that road. So about 75% of the 68,000 is what you're thinking. Okay. 
And again, the time frame on that is unknown at this point in time. That's correct. So at this point in time, you do have a an agreement with Mr. Kurtenbach to loan you funds to pay some of these bills. You're also having some bills held. Correct. The so uh, Sterlingers seven. and Ostrams are holding their bills right now until we are able to get our monthly stipend stipend in. Um, and then uh, Al was concerned because we I told him initially that uh, we're we're in you know we're in the hole right now and we can't afford to keep pushing Sturzinger out and Ostram out to, to do that. Because there's, there's multiple phone co calls coming into all three of us every day. Hey, we want some gravel here. Hey, we want this repaired. Uh, safety concerns and stuff like that. Uh, and Al said, you know, uh, he wants wanted that gravel laid down and through there before the winter so there was a time to get it to pack in. Because with gravel, if you lay it out there too late in the season and then the snow comes, then that gravel gets slid off into the ditch because the snow sticks to it and in order to get the, the snow off the road, it's going to roll out there too. But if we can get it packed soon enough, then we can get that gravel to be able to stay there and just skim the snow off the top. So Al was concerned about that, so he wanted his gravel laid down um, two, three weeks ago. And he said, if I need to, I will pay for it in order to get it done in a timely fashion. So that's been done? His gravel, or his road has been graveled, but that's part of that $7,800 there, and we have not received any money from Al. Okay. He just said he would help you out if necessary. Right. All right. All right. All right. Now I got that. I was coming up with fourteen grand, but it's only seven. So He's what are up. you asking from us today? You know, we're asking that uh, if the commission has money available for townships to be able to get us through uh, this winter so uh, I don't know if it would be a grant or or something of that sort uh, had Trenton Township applied for any of the grant program this year mm -hmm. and we have budgeted for next year for an additional grant program that they could apply for but that's for projects not completed uh, but they also have to come up with half Do we have projects that we, we did granted already that have not had a chance to be completed with our grant program? Trenton one done. Trenton's project is complete, the and the claim is set to be paid on the 19th Correct. out to them, that reimbursement. So it's just over $4,000, $4,040.98 is half of the cost of the project. <clears throat> When you received what looks like to be approximately $50,000 on the FEMA reimbursement, when you get that money, will the township be then back on its feet or? Not necessarily because we still haven't, we're gonna try to use that money to repair the damages that we had in, from the 9-11, 9-12 floods. So we have approximately probably about 75% of the damages, again, that we had from the April flooding damages. So we'll, we'll use that money to get us back up to repaired, and then we'll have to apply to FEMA again uh, for monies after that. For the September damages. Correct. So again, we're still gonna be in the black by the time that we do some culvert repairs, some um, building up some of the roads and that's also what we're looking at as Trenton Township is being that we're in that floodplain that we have this continually happening and, and it looks like the next two, three years that our weather pattern is gonna be still in this same wet season through the winters. Uh, we're trying to do some mitigation work out on some of these spots and build these roads up a little bit so that we're backing up that water and making it go through the culverts the way that it's supposed to and slow it down a little bit instead of going over the top of the roads and, and then wiping out more things down, downstream. And that's not taking into account your snow removal. It looks like about 2,500 to 3,000 per time you plow snow. Correct. And we get phone calls on that all the time too. How come the plows aren't out here 
within 12 hours of a snowfall. And so last year, uh, Todd being our elder here, he uh, has seen this in the past and said, if we go out and we dust off the road every time that we get one or two inches, we're going to, because it still costs us, you know, $2,000 every time the plows go around, whether it's blading snow off or blading the gravel. Uh, if we do this every time the two inches show up, we're not, we're going to run out of money way sooner. So there's lots of times where we waited, you know, for two or three snowfalls to land out there or watch the weather pattern and see what the wind's going to drift back in before we send it back out again. And we've talked about this year that we may have to start closing some of these roads and make more minimal maintenance roads in order for us to survive to get the, the main ones through and to get the bus routes uh, open and cleaned up in time for the bus routes. Because last year, again, we had times where the buses called and said, we can't get down through your road. We're not running the bus route until that road gets opened up. Well, looking at the weather pattern, two days later, it's supposed to hit us again. We're not going to go out there and open up that road. So we had individuals that had to drive three, four, five, six miles to bring their kids to a main intersection in order to get on the bus route. Brian, any comments on any of this request? Culverts or replacements or gravel or anything? Well, I know this is one of the areas hardest, hardest hit by the September event. Um, you know, we, we've tried to do our part with uh, the, some of the structures down there. I know we had one, one bridge that was in immediate danger and we mitigated that right away and you know worked with the township on that it was as, as it was their road but it was our bridge so we we fixed around the bridge and and uh the next day and destroyed it and they had to fix it two days in a row i mean we've been we've been cooperating with them what we can um but like i said this was one of the areas that was primarily hardest hit within the county. I mean, it was pretty widespread, but uh, down there it was pretty unbelievable uh, to see about that amount of water. And that happened twice to them, and I, I guess it's up to the board on whether or not they decide to, to cooperate with them. Other comments or questions? The only, only statement I'd... You know, they were diligent, and uh, after the initial spring flooding got got everything going and got the roads all fixed back up, unfortunately, they got damaged again. I mean, that's, there's just townships out there that have not even had a chance to get their initial from this spring fixed either. But you guys were, I mean, you did your job, uh, got your roads back in somewhat good shape, and then you're hit again by another flood. I mean, that's... That's the sad part about it. The uh, the deposits are to October, right? That's there, and so then you'll have two more months of deposits. Is that correct for November and December? Vicky, is that right? Correct. Okay. And then the opt out, Vicky. What's the the, the taxes and the opt out all come with the taxes? I we haven't gotten that far into it to see what the payment will be to you guys in November now. It'll be two, made two weeks from today, but I do not have that amount. Okay. Um, by the end of the week, I'd have it. But Because I look, I look at the opt-out amount. Uh, you, yeah, the they've been getting that all along, though. Whenever anybody pays taxes, the opt-out, the taxes, the road mm -hmm. and bridge levy, all go to them at the same time. So because they had uh, opt-out bank statements about 9000 but on the paper you sent us, they they can get up to fifteen thousand. Is that right? So they should. They've had fifteen thousand in opt out. Yeah, fourteen thousand nine ninety. Yeah. Okay. So. But that's that goes to them as soon as we get the taxes. They right. get that Which money. Which should be a larger sum now because most people. Well, are waiting. they had the opt out and the road and bridge levy for this year as well. Right. So they've had that. Yeah. So it isn't going to change much for next year. But they've done everything. They've maxed out on their levy that they can. They've done the road and bridge opt out to the highest amount they can by law, and they've done the opt out for 
fifteen thousand, basically. So they've done everything they can they to have, raise yes. funds to, mm -hmm. to do that. Okay. Right. And if we were going to make a guess that nobody's going to be held to, how much additional monies will they receive this year? Just a guess. I'm not sure I can tell from the deposit thing. I don't know what Ryan's looking at. Do you have what you received in April, or the May one? Do you have that in front of you? 4100 Yeah. I would say that they'll receive um, probably about $6,000 yet. And plus some opt-out money. Yep. So it's a it, it's a cash flow portion of it is an issue right now, obviously, uh, to make through to make sure we can get you to FEMA funds that hopefully will be a lump sum that will get you right enough to be able to, to do that. But if that doesn't come for four or five months, your in snow removal starts coming in and all that kind of stuff, it's all it's all under, you know, there. Um, I guess my, my thought is, is uh, you know, a grant type of possibility, but, you know, it's it's hard just to go and turn around and say, okay, here's 20 grand to get you through. Uh, because we have a lot of other townships that will get back here and say, well, you gave Trenton 20, where's our 20? And so we have to be, you know, careful of that. And if we want to turn around and make a decision that we want to give every township 20,000 bucks to get through, you know, fine, that's what I do. But I don't know if that's, I don't know if we're ready to do that right now. Um, the other option, you know, is a loan, um, would be a loan similar, you know, no interest type of loan, in my opinion, mm -hmm. that would allow you to get through, pay your bills. And then when that FEMA money does come in, see where we're at, you know, pay back a, a portion of it or something like that. And then when taxes come in again and, and we see where you're at on it. Um, and, and that would be my thought or leaning towards that until we get some type of a, a grant if we decide to do a grant for um you know emergency services from gravel to repair of uh snow removal or, or different things like that repair of other bridges caused by this damage because not every township is as far as long as you i mean you guys were very proactive and you need to get stuff done that's why you're at there's some i think townships that just close the roads and they're not fixing it they're not adding gravel they're just closing the roads yeah and so they're eventually going to need to do that, and and I think that's where we're going to see more of this coming in. You're probably just the first one. Um, so I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff out there for discussion. Um, you know, and I don't know what that would look like if we wanted to do a loan. I don't know if it's even possible or how that works on the books, Vicki, with uh, audit, legislative audit, and, and their, their type of stuff too. Yeah, I can check that out. I do not know off the top of my head. And I, I agree with that. The, I'm supportive of helping townships when we can help townships, but we've got to follow the rules, and we've got to remember how many townships we've got. And that was the thought that had passed through my mind, is if we could front you some of that FEMA money and then you pay us back when you get that, and in the meantime, we're going to see who else is coming in asking for things and see if there's some type of grant thing we can do that will help townships but I don't think we're ready right now, and you need something now, and that might be a loan. What, what would you guys think about that? You know, and, and I, don't, I don't know if we're, if we're looking at a loan, and I guess the question is if there's any reason we can't lend a township money. Vicki will have to check that out. But... What I was thinking is, and I don't know what you guys need to get through until that FEMA money, and let's just, let's figure six months, that it's going to take six months before you get that FEMA money. And we don't know, maybe it'll be longer, but Bob seems to think it might be four months. So if we figured six and, and looked at maybe lending you, I think the 68% of, of uh, or the 75% of 68000 was $51,000. And we lent you like forty thousand dollars to get you back up on your feet for now, and then we can talk more. What? What? I don't know if the commission has a thought on that. No, I, I 
I think that you know that would also, if you look at snow removal for for last year of, of just under thirty thousand, you know that would that would basically cover potentially that plus another ten thousand here, and you're going to get some taxes coming in here in the next two months that will help cover that too. Um, you know, you know, blading you may have to be done blading. I mean, I just you know some of these things you're just going to have to maybe if you can get around with it's not a safety issue. That you may have to just say we can't we don't have the cash flow to do it right now um obviously snow removal and doing what you're doing we appreciate that and you appreciate that you have to you can only do so much with so much money and so you have to continue to do that but if it's a safety issue you obviously need to to do some do some work on that but um yeah and you know and then you know as more come in and we if we decide to do something on a grant process and we give you this loan and we decide to look at it you know, there, maybe there's a chance six months down the, the, there we forgive the loan or we forgive a portion of the loan, um, depending on what all transpires. Um, but I think we need to get our uh, stuff uh, in a group here to make sure we're going to decide what we want to do, either on a grant process or do we just do loans um, and hear from Vicki on that possibility. So I think right now, if you need something now, which looks like it because you're in the in the red, <laughs> alone would probably be our, our best option to get you go through. Just a comment on, uh, I guess Bob left, but uh, the question is how many townships applied for FEMA for reimbursements? Do we have any idea? We know the Trenton did. Is there any other townships? Well, I don't know where Bob went. But. I'm sure quite a few of them. All of them, I believe. All of them applied for it? Yeah. All right. Some way, somehow, shape, or form between the two events. And, yeah. and hopefully the FEMA funds come in and it 11. gets you back right for the money that you've spent, the extra 100000 this year that you've had to spend when you wouldn't have. You had 47000 or 48000 in previous balance before you started, and if we could get you back up, FEMA could get you back to starting previously again, great. But if there's more things that need to get done that didn't qualify for FEMA, maybe that's where we look into a grant option for that portion of that type of stuff. Well, and I would like to see us take a look at all the counties who had a FEMA application and determination of how much funding they may get back or may not get back if it's 50, 70% of what they paid. Uh, give us kind of a ballpark idea for the entire county of what type of requests we might have for all townships, not just Trenton Township, so that we can plan accordingly if we're going to do some things to help all the townships out, whether it's uh, uh, providing culverts providing gravel providing whatever it is I would like to know the overall impact rather than just one specific township's impact so uh, Bob left but if we could get some sort of an idea Brian on, on what the total dollar amount was we submitted to FEMA we have another round going in is that correct for the last event and that hasn't been submitted yet to FEMA correct we're still working on uh, like I said before in, in order to be able to submit to FEMA we have to have it 100 percent complete okay so if we have another forty or fifty thousand dollars worth of damages that we need to fix before we can even apply for that. Okay, Bob. So give me a, a quick rundown on the FEMA application process for all the townships. How many townships participated, and what type of dollar amounts might we kind of look at for? Uh, I know each one's individual, and I'm going to put you on the spot for dollar amounts. But are all of them eligible, and will all of them get some reimbursements? And if so. Can we tailor this reimbursement process to, to or our, our help to, to the FEMA guidelines? I would have to, it would be difficult to tailor it to what the response is because each township has a different, I hate to use the word handler, but each, each FEMA representative handles about six townships is all they're allowed. We had 19 townships apply okay. for, the, for the March disaster. And uh, what happened is you had to meet a, a minimum threshold of damages to apply. And we had 19 apply back in, in the March one. The September one is still at the, the governor has sent that paperwork on to the president and that, that decision hasn't been made yet on whether or not we're gonna qualify. If we take the 19 townships on the March one, do we have a dollar amount that we submitted to FEMA for all 19? Total? Not on me. I would have to go go get it for you. Okay. I guess what I'm trying to figure out is 
if we're going to help townships, I'd like to know what everyone's going to cost us so we can we can plan accordingly, whether it's a loan process, a grant process, or if we've got to do something different with our budgets and our surpluses. Uh, obviously, this is an unusual event. We're going to be, we've got bridges we can't complete ourselves, so we've got issues that will, will crop up, I think, next spring again, too, and this winter. Hopefully, don't have snow, but I think we're going to have it. A little bit of it anyway, but I think go I'm ahead. Going Kroger. off of, of Commissioner Bartley there, if, if for example, there was a million dollars worth of damages submitted to FEMA, and FEMA is only going to cover 75%, and if we decided to do a grant process that would cover the 25% that was submitted, which is actual work done or whatever like that, that would give us an idea of, okay, 250000 budgeted for. Um, you, we know what the, each township submitted, and we cover 25% of that. Yeah. would be a possibility of, of moving forward. Um, and that way we'd get a number because we know what the number is from FEMA. We know what you guys have spent because you had to submit bills for it. Um, you're only going to get 75% of it. We fill in on the back end of the 25% um, of that, and that you know gives everybody – uh, a fair disbursement of a grant process that is this is what you spent, so we're covering your 25. Mm -hmm. uh, would be a possibility of what we could do down, you know. Down that, that's kind of what I'm looking at is, uh, is somewhat we don't want every township having to come in and go through the same process. You guys started it, and I applaud you for that, and obviously there's a need. Uh, obviously we need to step up to the plate somehow or some way. It's just how to do it the most equitable way. And, develop some sort of a formula that works for us. So while we can't, I don't think, give you money today, I think we need to at least task our finance department and our uh, uh, commission department to, to come up with a proposal and get the research done as quickly as possible. So we're looking at a couple of weeks for another meeting. Hopefully those people will uh, lay low I on your... I think we could actually have a motion today because yeah. if you're in the hole, it isn't like they've got a lot of time to get some things resolved and we may have snow or whatever. And was a f uh, um, dollar amount, a percentage of the FEMA money they expect? I, I said I think maybe 40000 Do you guys have a thought on that? Because I would make a motion to lend them that much money subject to Vicki checking with legislative audit um, to see if we can do that. And that way, we would have something going on and we could move forward rather than waiting the two weeks unless you think that's moving too fast. No, I, I think I, I would support it. Um, you know, I'm not, you know, 40, I was thinking 30, but I'm not going to, but 40 is fine too. Again, it's, it's a loan, um, that type of thing. Um, it was probably something you would hold in your account until you needed it for snow removal anyway. Um, and stuff, and uh, you know, I guess I, what I was looking at was we had a grant process for the bridges for a hundred thousand, and 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 we only used sixty-two. We have yeah, just over, and the the cup the two projects that have been reimbursed actually the project cost. You know what we had was estimates, and we approved amounts based on estimates, and the two that have come in the project costs were a little bit lower than what we actually approved. Mm -hmm. So we. Sh you know, if you go off the estimated, we have just over 37,000 left of that 100,000. And it might be even a little bit more than that. So I guess my, I was thinking maybe 30,000 of that 37 that we would have left over that we could loan uh, to uh, Trenton for the, for the time being. And, we, and I don't know how we would have to change that because we're repurposing those funds that we have budgeted, but we had 100,000 budgeted in this year's that we're not using, so. Um, that's where I was kind of getting my 30,000 was that we were. I don't think you need to repro I, I think a motion by the board does that, that money is there and it's budgeted for. So I don't think you need to go back through and yeah. do a, a, a budget amendment a, or no, no, because okay. the budget authority is there to spend it. So a motion by the board is what would be needed. But the, but the motion eight. can't be a loan out of that. It's gotta be a grant, right? Say that again, I couldn't I think hear that. You can, I think you need to give us time to research whether or not we can 
what a loan would look like, whether that's something feasible and allowable with legislative audit. Um, I mean, I think we can get that done and have that back in two weeks by the 19th. Um, now, if you're talking just a grant, you're going to give them dollars and with, with no expectations, that's back. I mean, sort of like our culvert project. Then I think you make a motion today to, to give that, and we'll, we'll cut a check. Um, but the loan process is going to need to be reviewed before we do anything further. I mean, I think Vicki Vicky and I need to visit, um, you know, maybe Brian and Bob would get involved too at some, at, at some point if we're looking at, you know, exactly what we're looking at for fund, potentially needed funds. Even what the legal agreement looks like in terms of repayment terms and those kinds of Correct. things, all we would of that need, needs to be figured out as well. We would need some type of a loan agreement. Would it be possible to to just do something on the the, the uh, accounts payable at seventy eight, you know, an eight thousand dollar grant out of that fund, and then in two weeks we can determine we give the other townships a chance to 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 apply if they want or to make an appearance or. Uh, Bob just gave me a sheet that, that shows the uh, uh, estimated township total for damage event number one through all, all the townships. It comes up to $365,183.49. So it would be submitted to FEMA, is that correct? That, that is the amount that we use to apply to FEMA for a federal declaration through the state of South Dakota. All right, and then you have on here a May-June event estimate total. Yeah, the, disregard that. The, the one you need to look at is the is March one. That's the one that was approved. Okay, we March one. Yeah, we didn't qualify for the other ones yet. We didn't. Okay, that but, was like forty-two thousand. But these are the, the numbers. Three hundred sixty-five thousand is the numbers that we used and we calculated with information from the townships that was sent for the declaration. Now the process as FEMA comes down, they look at each township individually, look at what their records are and what they requested and what they did. And like I say, FEMA adjusts those numbers to match what they consider to be on the ground real, real facts. So sometimes those numbers change. Sometimes they, sometimes they increase and sometimes they decrease. Just and do be we, aware of that. Do we have the numbers that FEMA adjusted the 365 to? No, ma'am. That, that is still ongoing. There's still some townships that. still have not been yeah. contacted yet, and other townships are just about complete through the process. Friends Township was seventy-one thousand four hundred eighty-three dollars and twenty-three cents. They ended up at sixty-eight. So, mm -hmm. so for example, mathematically speaking, if if we looked at trying to get thirty thousand dollars to Trenton Township, that would be approximately forty-five percent of the sixty-eight thousand. Mm -hmm. So, if we looked at maybe a policy subject to legislative audit, okay of lending townships up to 45% of the amount um, of their actual expenses or the FEMA estimate, we could do it either way. It'd be 72 versus 68. It's not a big number there, all right? We would be making a commitment of approximately $165,000 out of our budget. Mm -hmm. Did that make sense, what I just said? And you're saying that's the loan? loan that's the loan. loan. That's the loan. And then we could... We can work on the grant part right. once we see what other people are asking for and where we're going to be at budget-wise. But the thing is, I don't think we can say to Trenton Township, you know, we'll lend you $30,000 and not say to other townships to come in and ask the same thing that we're going to be willing to do that. And I think we're right, it looks like at 164332 is approximately what we'd be at. Well, I budget. think you'd be fair, like you said, if you did it a percentage across that. <clears> you can <throat> see that our damages were probably the majority of that or the, the hardest hit township out of the 19 townships that were out there. So um, here's another proposal to throw at you, listening to the numbers that you're talking. In order to get us up and running here in the next week or two before the snow flies and we can get some of these repairs done and some of these bills paid, would it be possible to do, like if you're talking the 40,000, Thirty, could I think. Do, could we do the twenty thousand in a grant and twenty thousand in the loan process later on for you guys to work on it in a couple of weeks? Then that would get us. We keep keep in mind by the end of November they'll actually get about ten thousand five hundred. 
from their tax and our culvert that'll be in the next claim also okay and, and that should be in the to next your, to your point uh, I, I was looking at that number the 25 percent if we decided to go a grant process would be about 17,000 for your 68 so um, so I guess my thought was do the loan of 45 um, percent percent for everybody if somebody needs a loan nobody doesn't they don't that's fine but if you do that's what they're and then we will work on a grant program that if we decide to do a grant program that it takes, we're going to cover the 25%, then we may forgive 17,000 of the 30,000 or the 40,000, whatever we decide here. And then the rain remaining needs to be paid back after you receive your FEMA funds Correct. type of thing. So that would be a way to allow you to get cash flow to get you through and any other township to do that. Um, if they want it, uh, and then also we are granting the deductible, I guess, is what whatever I don't know what it is, the 25% of of that to each township for for their FEMA numbers, and then we've kind of offered it to everybody, and at the same amount, same thing. You're obviously uh, of the 68,000 of the 360, you have a lot of the. A lot of the stuff, and that way you get your fair share. It wouldn't be just a flat sum for every township. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, when I look at it, I'm not, I don't like loan programs. Part of it is this is a one time, two time, three time event. We might have four or five more of these types of events. And if we need to step up to the plate to grant money in those situations, the loans just get, you know, they just keep. We're going to have to forgive them, or we're not going to get paid back for it. It doesn't put them in a financial position. But at 25% of the the uh, 68,000 that that FEMA is being presented with, or I would rather see us do a straight 25% grant. If we know FEMA is only going to pay 75%, our 25% makes them whole on the expense. Now it doesn't help them as far as cash flow is concerned, but it's a grant program that we, each one applies for, and each one gets. We, we decide we're going to provide the 25% to make them whole with what FEMA pays them back. Now, if FEMA doesn't pay them back or there's an issue with how they do that, then that 25% doesn't show up, and we'll have to deal with that later. But 25% of what they applied for FEMA and FEMA or what their actual expense was, if we just pay that as a grant, we've kind of made you whole at that point, and then we... I, w I would agree where you're going from, yeah. but I'm just not sure when those funds come. And if those funds don't come for six months, they're going to go through that 17000 fairly quickly for snow removal and stuff and that kind of thing. And so um, I... But as you said, we do have money coming back in the end of November that would yeah. help get through yeah. the winter. It might not be quick enough. And I don't have any problem myself with saying we'll pay 25% of the 365000 183 to make the townships all and that number out of our budget then is ninety one thousand two hundred and ninety five dollars and we have about forty thousand is it or thirty eight thousand what we have in that grant program right now well, we could start about, with this year yeah. thirty yeah about thirty seven thousand thirty seven thousand so we could we, we could, could easily that. start that with a grant yeah tonight we could we could make we that could, happen we could do the twenty five percent recognizing that they're going to get some money back in here in the end of November to hopefully get you through the winter time. You see where I'm going with this? I don't I don't like loans. I don't know where you guys are at at it, but uh, it's a, an anchor over your head. But, uh, I don't like putting you in that position. Uh, it might help us, I guess, but at the same time, I'm not, I'm not, I don't like loans. But I guess, what are your, what are your, what are your thoughts? I mean, um, well, like I said, in order for us to get this paid off and then I'd like to do some of that graveling for safety concerns here before it flies. So we're gonna, I'm gonna put out another 5,000 in gravel and blading here in the next week or two. So there we're sitting at 15. So if we could get that grant of 25% today and then still get the, the loan to get us through the snow removal season if FEMA doesn't come back through. Um, so that's where I was you know, putting out that option of half of it as a grant and half of it as a, as a loan process right now and, and uh, once FEMA comes through. But in order to get us up and running today, it would be nice to do that grant process hmm. like you guys talked about. 
the, the, the real the real numbers you have are right here your costs you already have all of fema's working with is estimates you might get fifty thousand you might get a hundred thousand back you don't know until those assessors assign numbers to each project i mean you have no idea the dollar amount really correct i mean the real numbers you have are the actual costs you have you, you owe people yeah we right spent sixty eight thousand dollars right but it's hard to, on estimates, establish a loan, a loan or a grant or whatever. Because I've worked with FEMA, and sometimes it surprised you all of a sudden, where, where'd you come up with this dollar amount? You know, or else it could be the other way. Uh, that's all we're going to get. So, I mean, it's, it's hard to base a solid figure on estimates. But what we can do is base it on the 365 183 that the county submitted to FEMA on behalf of the township. Did I That's say that right? Estimate. That's still an estimate. It doesn't right. really matter that it's an estimate. We could just say we'd pay 25% of that amount. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then we don't have to worry about trying to figure all of the rest of that. No. I'm for helping them out. I don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I mean, math. How much? You don't know. We got a blizzard tomorrow, too. I mean, mm -hmm. it's uh, sad. I'm just against we're at seventy eight hundred dollars in debt and we're gonna gonna add another thirty or forty thousand dollars to their debt with a loan. I, I just that but they'll have I, a, they'll, they'll have hopefully the money will come in and when they can pay it back. But they I like should it. have a lump sum coming in from FEMA sometime in the next six months. Uh, yeah, but that just reimburses the expenses. That, back. Yeah. that reimburses the <laughs> expenses that they've already paid. Mm -hmm. So to me that that's fine. It makes them whole with our twenty five percent. Grant makes them whole. If we if we only paid twenty five percent of their actual expense up to this point, forget about FEMA at this point. But their twenty five percent of their actual expenses, I think, is where you are going with that question. Is those are estimates only? If we were to say we'll pay twenty five percent of of uh, all the county's exp or all the township's expenses on a particular this event that they submitted. But my only argument is is they're here because they don't have enough money to get through the winter. And so $17,000 may not get them through the winter, and that's where the loan would kick in. Because I don't think we're ready to grant 30000 bucks at this point. I think we'd be ready to grant a certain amount. But I think where the loan comes in is that the cash flow over the next four to six months waiting for, to, for you to get whole from FEMA is where the issue is. And that's where I think the loan would serve its purpose, would be a cash flow issue. So if we gave you the seventeen, you did your safety gravel, you did that kind of stuff, now we get into January, and you still get some of the money, and you're down to five thousand bucks in your checking account, and now have no snow removal. You know, then then you're back to us again, waiting for looking for a loan to to get you through until FEMA shows up. Now, obviously, if FEMA shows up in the next two months, and we've got that loan, you can turn around, take those FEMA funds, repay it right back, and we're we're in good shape. You should be equal to equal, especially if there's no interest, even if if we can do that too. So, how much money is coming back from taxes at no, end of November here? That's ten thousand. Ten thousand. Well, six thousand. And then, then forty-five hundred with the reimbursement for the culvert. Okay. So they're going to get about ten grand in the next two months, rough for rough, couple give or weeks. take, a couple weeks. Yeah. You said the nineteenth is the next claims, and Vicky. And, and so that gets you out of debt, basically. Right. It doesn't allow you to put the gravel down. To, for safety purposes prior to stuff and it doesn't let you have any money roughly except if you get a couple thousand a month but you know a, a snow pulling pulling the putting the plows out costs you a couple thousand every time you do it anyway exactly and then also the other part of this is that we're trying to get the roads fixed back up for the september stuff so that we can apply for fema if it does like you said it's it's at the president's desk right now if that is approved we need financials right now to get that completed by a certain date and time in order to apply for that Submit FEMA for stuff that too. Purpose. So mm -hmm. if we can give get this money now, get things repaired, get it up to shape, then we're able to apply for that, which then in the long run will help us and help you guys too. So the 365183 of that Trenton Township wasn't 68000 it was seventy two. Is that correct? Did I? Correct. So it was 72, and 25% of 72 would be 18,000 if we're looking at doing that today. That, that's the difference. Because 
I really think we need to tie it into that number that's coming out of Bob's office because that's what makes it possible for us to do the math fairly for everybody. Right, but if somebody only spent 50 of that <coughs> 72, then we're reimbursing for something they didn't do. Right. So that's where they've actually spent 68000 So if you know exactly what they spent and they can tell us that, then that's where you get your 25% of it and stuff too. So, um, you know, and, and I just think that down the road here, we're going to have more and more townships needing help uh, on a cash flow basis getting to this winter because they're going to experience their funds. They're going to draw down their bank accounts, which Trenton, you know, had 49000 to begin with, and now they're down to zero. Um, they're going to need that loan opportunity and the grant portion of it. And I just um, – and also I don't think – these guys are prepared. They put, to, put together a great, great presentation mm -hmm. here for all your funds. You answered all of our questions that we would have if you would come here. And so we need to let the other townships that haven't fixed their roads, that have just closed them, find out what they're going to need to do that, and what they submitted to do that stuff, and to get it fixed. I think they're going to be in the same boat. I really do. But. See, I, I, I myself would prefer to base it on the number that we've got, and if a township chose to use their 25% because they've got problems from March, they got problems from June, they got problems from September, and they have to do snow removal. And if they choose to use their 25% for snow removal instead of fixing the road, I'm okay with that. I don't think that we need to micromanage the funds that we give them and that we should just say, okay, we know we need to help the townships. We need to have an equitable way to do it. We're going to look at 25% of that FEMA application and, and, that, and that's the amount that we'll reimburse, and then you use it for what you need to use it for. If we're saying they already have to have spent the money like you guys did, we're going to be back to the problem we've got with our grant program where we've got townships that we gave a grant to that they're not going to use the money this year because they can't afford their matching funds. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So if by consensus we're all willing to do up to 25% of what their FEMA application was and task Vicki and Stacy to explore the loan option for those that are looking at budget deficits that exceed their projected snow removal budget for the winter, I think that needs to be a discussion that happens two weeks from now so that we can figure out loan terms and things like that. But if, if everybody is open to the 25% or up to 25% of the as a grant. FEMA application as a grant, knowing that that's 91000 or nine. Nope. It was $91,295. Right. Yeah, I can, I can do that. So that gets you get 17 right away. Um, and then if we run into an issue down, we'll have to explore the loan possibility. Um, if we can even give a zero interest loan, I'm not sure we can. They may make us charge you, <laughs> you know. And, Maybe state laws that say that and stuff too, so we have to look into it. But get you 17 right now, opens it up for all other townships to come in if they need some some help. Um, and then if you run on a cash flow issue coming down the road, you're going to have to come back to us again and see if we're ready for a loan or figured something else out. All right, we appreciate your time and efforts of helping us out. So do you all want right. a motion? Well, uh, again, you said it was 17 or 18? I think it's 18. If we're you using the 365, 183. Use the percentage mm -hmm. and, it and let it be calculated. For let the it motion. be calculated. 25% of the FEMA application mm -hmm. for townships. Mm -hmm. Is that your motion? That would be my motion. Um, I'll second. And, and I don't know if this needs to be part of the motion, that what we use, we use up the remainder that comes out of the, the grant program money that we have set aside until we've used that up because then we'll have to do a supplement or something to... Yeah. Fix that uh, later. I think we understand that's where it's going to come from. Okay. Uh, we've already discussed that. So. That's uh, no, no, it has to be part of the motion, but that's where the funds will come from. Any other discussion? It's 20. Uh, Jenny, you have the motion. <laughs> Would you restate the motion so that we know exactly what we wrote down? The motion was made by Pierce, seconded by Krogman to give 25% of the FEMA funds, which equals $365,183. Forty-nine cents. And, uh, make, I guess, Forty-nine cents. I guess we want to. I want to say uh, make available to the townships. I don't know if we have that in there. That it, this is obviously discussion is for the townships and stuff. 
because I, I'm not sure if there's any other entities that could come back to us and say, well, um, water district had water, you know, problems and we would like, and we're a taxing authority and we'd like some help. So I think we need to make sure it goes to townships and 25% of their FEMA number. And let me ask you this. Do they need to apply or are we just going to send out checks? I think they need to apply. And what does that mean? Yeah. Come to the board like Trenton Township did? Or at least submit paper, paperwork. A request. We'd have 18 more meetings. Paper, what type of paperwork? We know, we know what each township did, right? You have right. a list. Right. And so 25% of what was submitted there right. is available to each it's township. Available. I would say all they need to do is make a request for those funds. Uh, and we would go and they can use them for what you wanted you talked about. Um, to those townships. Those funds. So you have some type of documentation in terms of record keeping. But yeah, just send a letter. Barley, you send a letter to all townships. And then they yep. can reply requesting that. And to those townships that have requested FEMA funds, the 19 townships. Right. Only for that March event. For that event. March event. For the event. That the no, information March that. Yeah, the March event. Yeah, we'll deal with the other event when it's authorized and May not we see be approved. the numbers. May yeah. not be approved, okay. So the 25% then that the county is looking at is 91,295 would be the total. We have about 37,000. Do you also want me then to do a, bud a supplemental budget hearing for the remainder of that amount to get that into there so that we have the budget authority to spend that this year? I think yes. I think we need to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How long does that take? It takes a while because it, it needs to be, be advertised. Yeah. Right. And that's right. So I think it, it would, we could get the budget supplement done first meeting in December this point for now though the your portion could be distributed now because we have that for 38,000 right. that has not been spent on our grant project for the culverts it's when we get past that that's when the budget needs to go so okay then that time frame will look at the loan possibilities as as they arise or if that's, they're possible but this will at least get you some cash flow Appreciate okay it. all yeah. right the motion has been made and seconded. Do you have some comments, Vicki? I was just going to ask, when we get the figures on the exact amount, can we do a check today and you have approved it and it will be formally approved at the next meeting, but we can cut the check? Yes. Okay. That's agreeable. Any other discussion? If not, we'll call the roll. Rogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Forsma? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, guys. You know, Thank you very much. It's obviously an issue that's out there that we want to address. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's all across. I get that. Have a good day. So just one point of clarification before we move on from this topic to my thing to my report. So Trenton Township was the seventy one thousand four eighty three twenty three, and we're going to do twenty five percent of that amount. So it's approximately eighteen thousand. I've got that from Mike here. So. And Bob, if you'd send a copy of that to each of the commissioners, so they got it to look at too. Okay. Yeah, we'll or, we'll sit down and visit about this this afternoon. Or you could stop to her office. I don't know how you do that. Vicki can answer that I think Vicki was going to talk to you right now. She'll talk to you and tell you how the out. process works. Thank you. Any other comments? 
Hearing none, we're going to move on to the Commission Department Director's Report. If you've got time. <laughs> Take whatever time you need. If you'd like, I think we'll... I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. If you're not, we could go to the state's attorney. No, I'm ready. All right. So as part of my report, um, uh, there was uh, some question I was asked to look at some additional funding for the parking lot projects. Um, I think you are all aware that there may be some additional unforeseen costs with the BCOAC parking lot as they kind of dug into that project. There were some issues that came up. So I had some estimates there. So the, the bid for our parking lot here at the government center was um, just over 193000 Our 52% of that was about $100,400. Um, the BCOAC lot with, with the change order, that one change order that we had already, that and the, um, the cost was $148,000. So if you're looking at uh, our budget, which I believe I had included with my report, get to that. Um, it, so what we had, we actually had to take some money due to kind of a financial accounting correction out of that admin building, this bottom line, the 4296 line. So that dropped that down a little bit more than we had anticipated. So it looks like we're about $9,700 short, but in this budget you can see we had a pretty, pretty substantial highway project that we had budgeted for that's not going to get done. So we do have the money there in that fund to cover both of these, both of these projects. Um, as we were talking, we've already talked about the projects, some of the township projects getting finalized. There have been um, two projects that did submit for payment now. Um, I'll get you some more information on that next week, but it was Trenton Township, as we discussed, their project, and I know Brian has had a chance to, to review those. Um, the total project, our appro we approved them at almost, just shy of 4300 The total project cost came in a little less than that, so um, $4,040.98 is what they will get back, and that will be is just part of your claims for next week. And then, um, if you recall, Volga Township had a, a pretty major bridge project where they're putting in, replacing a bridge with culverts. I believe Brian can jump in and correct me on the Volga Township project. Um, and he's reviewed that that was complete, and that too came in um, a little, the pr total project cost was less than anticipated. We had budgeted, or we had approved 30000 just shy of 30500 and our cost ended up being twenty two five, so about 8000 less total project cost. So those two checks for Volga Township and Trenton Township will get approved at our next meeting um, on the 19th. And I'd like to comment, I know you guys had mentioned it earlier about some townships that are working on theirs. I've reached out to all of them that did apply, and the only township that I am aware of that's going to continue with their project is Preston. So that, that project is underway right now. The other townships... Uh, I know there was discussion about possibly pushing uh, some of those funds into next year, but I guess that's the decision the board will have to make. But uh, they'd claim that they didn't have uh, the bankroll to do those projects this year, even with their portion. You know, there were a couple projects from Eureka. Oslo had a couple that were approved. Trent, uh, Preston had two projects that actually, yeah, just two, the two projects that were approved as well. And I think all along we had said part of that discussion was that if the projects were not done and submitted in this calendar year that those monies, um, you know, they'd have to reapply essentially for next year, next year's funding. However, that does open up some additional funds potentially if they don't apply or don't send in for reimbursement for this project that we just discussed with Trenton Township. So I'll kind of crunch those numbers too and see where we may be at, but I want to make sure that we have enough dollars in the budget authorization to spend the money before the end of the year. So, um, Laura and I, along with Kristen uh, in the finance office and Vicki, 
We've been working on, um, as you know, implementing that new health reimbursement account, the HRA plan as part of our um, updated health insurance that starts January. WageWorks is the entity, if, if anybody has a flexible spending account right now, you're familiar with WageWorks, but WageWorks was going to be the, is going to be the entity administering our HRA, and they need 4% as a pre-funded amount prior to 1-1 in a new account, so what, and Vicki can kind of jump in here and, and help me, but we have to track all of the payments and reimbursements out of a separate checking account. We do that right now with the flexible spending account, people who sign up with that, so Vicki will have to open up a new account. We have to pre-fund that with 4% of what the county's total risk will be. We don't know exactly what that number is, but it's approximately $10,000. So. Um, I know Vicki was going to research whether we can just take that as a lump sum out of a fund or that we need to um, kind of prorate that by department. That's what legislative audit wanted us to do with the risk portion, so I'm thinking they're going to want us to do that with this pre-fund 4% as well. And we can, and it's, it's pretty simple. I mean, it's not a whole lot. It's just some math, and we can get that done, but we're looking into that. Um, so it would come out of each individual department potentially um, and then there'll be a contract in front of you too regarding that kind of fund funding profile and that four percent from wage works at the next meeting um, but but we're kind of taking that out of the payroll piece because the the there's no money coming out from employees to fund the county's risk so it's going to be on Laura and I to balance that that check uh, that that checking account each, and I don't know what that looks like. If it'll be weekly, if it'll be mo uh, monthly, but what they do is, as soon as there is a reimbursable expense, WageWorks um, goes in and pulls money out of that check out of that account. So we have to essentially, at the beginning of the year next year. Um, We'll probably have to take all of those budgeted amounts from each department that we budgeted for the county's portion of our risk and do one big claim into this checking account so that there is money there and ready to spend as claims come in, if that makes sense. And then we will watch that and we'll have to, uh, we'll be coding employees probably by department so we know how much each department, and so if a, de if a particular department has more, the county is responsible for more risk in a particular department, we'll have to pull some more budget dollars. I think I told you, you know, we can't, this is all new to us, so we kind of did our best guess on budgeting for this for next year, so we'll just kind of keep you posted and be giving you updates on how that's going. Um, some good news, though, that we did receive yesterday from um, Wellmark is that you know, there was some discussion on the employee's responsibility in turning in their HRA reimbursable claims to, to wage works to get reimbursed back for those. Um, we found out yesterday that all of those HRA eligible claims will go directly to wage works and the employees will not be responsible for submitting those themselves, which is a huge, huge, um, huge thing for employees who, uh, you know, that just don't, may not understand it, and it Sorry. takes a lot of some of that extra work off of potentially Laura and I, too, and helping employees get those claims um, submitted. So we were excited about that. The one downfall to all of this is that um, we are losing the option of the debit card for the flexible spending account. So there were, um, I think there's maybe about 20 employees that have an FSA, a flexible spending account with WageWorks. Um, this is money that comes out pretext they use then to um, spend on other, their health, um, their health issues, new glasses, you know, different things throughout the year. And there used to be a debit card option with that. And there's no way to divorce the FSA and the HRA funds really with WageWorks because they're the same entity will still have flexible spending. It's just going to be the reimbursement piece may look different to some of those that had the debit card in the past. So we will be working with those individuals on that. So just an update on that. We've been working on that. Uh, 
the last week or so. I did provide you with the agenda for the upcoming Sioux Valley Commissioners Association meeting on November, it says 21st, it's actually Wednesday, November 20th, it is that Wednesday. Um, it's over in Huron this time. Um, this is new, if you remember a couple years ago, Beadle and Spink counties joined our, we came eight, from eight to 10, and so this is their first opportunity to host this, this meeting, so um, it will be in Huron at Normie Exhibit Hall, um, if any of you do plan to attend, I, I believe the, it's later this week, at the end of this week is the RSVP. So I know I've heard from um, some already. I'll look at it. Mike plans to go. Anybody else? To 10 County <coughs> on the 20th. Ryan? Larry, yes. Angie, are you going to go? Okay. And I know... Leanne had already said she's not able to attend. So, okay, I will RSVP then accordingly. Um, I did attend the Pictometry Lunch and Learn on the 23rd of October. That was sponsored by Eagle View. They're the company that provides us our imagery uh, for our pictometry program. There was a pretty good group of people here. We had representatives from um, the local law enforcement here in town, as well as BMU, um, some our RIT and GIS folks. Um, so good, a good group and uh, just some things that stuck out to me were that if, and I, I knew this, but it's kind of a good reminder that if the county were to experience a natural disaster, a tornado, earthquake, a terrorist attack, I think flooding is not considered, is not a piece of this. Um, but I think tsunamis and Hurricanes were also, but I didn't think that applied to us. So, um, but they would come back and do another flight for free uh, to take essentially after pictures. So if we do ever have an event in the county, uh, a, a tornado earthquake or a terrorist attack, they would come do that for us. Also this spring when they were doing the flyovers, they like to do it uh, spring or fall before, either before the leaves come out on the trees or after they've fallen. So they get clean, clean images. And because of the weather, just like it has been for a number of different things. The weather affected when they could fly with overcast conditions. And so before they could really get uh, the rural parts flown well, uh, the, the leaves started to bud out and form. And so they're going to actually come back here this fall and refly the rural parts of the county um, to c capture them. They're, they'll do that for free for us to give us some, some better imagery. So uh, some other things I'm working on right now. Um, I had visited with um, Dan and uh, I think working with Laura through it too. Um, there's a public comments, the, the public comments that we have at the beginning of each of our agendas um, is required by statute, but we really don't have a policy in place that speaks to you know how, how long and what someone has to do to, to come up with that. And I actually borrowed a policy from Lake County that I really like, so I'll be bringing that forward to the board for you to review. Um, make changes if you feel necessary, but establish that policy so we have something in place moving forward for that section. We really haven't had an issue with it yet, but before something, um, before anything may come up in the future, it'd be nice to have a policy so we have a clear kind of process on how that works. The other thing I've been looking at is a conflict of interest policy. For the county, um, you know, Dan has reviewed one that I uh, one that I provided for him, and and I think he's comfortable with that. We're going to actually have a conversation though with um, Steve Bogue. He's in town tomorrow to see if there's anything with that that would in, impact uh, unions and get his opinion on that. So we'll, we'll, we're kind of looking down that avenue. But you may be seeing that here in the near future coming to you for your uh, to look at as well. I did provide some health fair statistics over the last uh, few years. Um, things have actually stayed relatively close. Um, who we invited to participate, I think, is based on who, pro who, re um, who participated the year before and how many yes respondents and how many no. Um, we did have a couple cancel at the last minute this year. A couple of the vendors, due to blizzard conditions out in Pier, they weren't able to get here. Um, back in 2017, the city was doing that 
doing the invitations for the vendors and then with some changeover in staff over there we've took, taken that over the last couple of years so we really don't have that information but you can see the numbers there for how many flu shots um, have were administered and then those participating in the health screenings as well and then also in my packet was some information on a coordinated plan for natural resources um, there's several meetings the closest one is down in Sioux Falls if you're interested in that um, and then it's just upcoming dates the district weed meeting is tomorrow we host that out at the BCOAC um, we do have for those of you around uh, this weekend we have Kristen is doing the pumpkin chucking event out at the BCOAC uh, offices will be closed Monday the 11th in honor of the Veterans Day holiday on um, 4-H recognition night coming up November 12th on um, the the CMAR RFP pre-proposal meeting that is going to be November Thursday November 14th at 1 30 over at the sheriff's office just had mentioned the Sioux Valley Commissioners Association meeting um, office is closed for Thanksgiving the Ag Appreciation Banquet coming up um, Tuesday November 19th this is not on there at 2 o'clock that afternoon that's the, in two weeks after our next um, commission meeting leadership Brookings is having a, a, a county portion from two to three I wondering if it doesn't sound like they're giving us one hour and I know I have several department heads are going to be able to be there and, and answer some of their questions and, and whatnot so I was thinking it'd be nice to have at least one commissioner if if chair chair Bartley isn't available then what, what there's something Tuesday, November 19th. It's the same day as our next commission meeting. It's at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, though. Uh, yeah, I can. Like, to make that work. Okay. And then, um, just looking way into the future, a few couple months, that the Brookings SDSU Day at the Capitol is Wednesday, January 15th. So, if you want to put that on your calendars now, um, then you have it there. And that's all I have, unless you have some questions for me. At this point, Dan, if you'd like to give us a report. Yeah, last week I attended a training uh, put on by the National District Attorneys Association. It was in Savannah, Georgia. Uh, it was centered on office administration. Uh, so this was a training that um, we go on once a year. Uh, this is a one of several trainings that they offer. Um, and so this one focused on efficiencies that prosecutors can make within their office uh, whether it's processing cases or more of the HR administrative aspect of office administration so very helpful um, it's interesting to hear and uh, <coughs> listen to other prosecutors and how they're running their offices uh, there were prosecutors from all across the country uh, that attended as well as presented uh, so it's always interesting to see how their prosecutors are running their offices uh, learn a lot uh, and a few things that I'm going to bring back and implement to, to make our office uh, even more efficient so that was uh, most of last week actually I got sick midway through the conference but uh, made it back uh, this last weekend so other than that we're staying busy <laughs> okay, great just uh, a question about that yeah was there any focus on any um, electronic software types things that we're not doing I can tell you that we're actually pretty cutting edge compared to other states attorneys offices um, the evidence.com thing actually did come up and there's only a few offices that are doing evidence.com there were a lot of prosecutors who were interested in changing to that um, but I feel fortunate you know I, the fact that we're on Zerker with all the other law enforcement agencies that's fairly cutting edge uh, the fact that we're all on a shared software program uh, and then our movement towards evidence.com is actually even more cutting edge as it relates to other prosecutor offices you know that you hear stories about all the different law enforcement agencies including the state's attorney's office are all on different software networks and just the headaches that that uh, causes and so as it relates to software within the office um, we're very much ahead of the game so it's yeah that's good to hear so 
Any other questions for Dan? Hearing none, Misty, I see you've been in and out a couple of times. Uh, would you have a report or any information on your uh, meeting tomorrow morning that we should know about? I, I Just tomorrow morning, 8.30 is registration and the meeting will start at about nine. I'm thinking it should go till about three or four in the afternoon. Wow, long meeting. It is, usually is a lot of different entities there. Fish and Wildlife, Game Fish and Parks. Uh, I believe we contacted DOT to come and just to answer questions. Um, they'll ask the area supervisors that are there they gave us a list of questions this year which is very nice um, so we can kind of give a report on each county i anticipate it being the same um, otherwise i was going to remind you of that meeting and stacy helped me out with that thank you i did have a visit from brown county yesterday um, we kind of we spent about three and a half hours at the shop going over the computer in the truck um, that I've been having issues with so it kind of it gave me an idea where to start so I think I can get that back on track and that that computer rolling um, we talked about looking into other computers also and if I find something different than they have we'll communicate back and forth and hopefully come to a conclusion and maybe all the counties can have the same kind of equipment so if we do have questions we can just call each other like we do Otherwise, that is all I have for a report. All right, thank you. Any questions for Misty? Seeing none, at this point, we're going to move into uh, uh, our report. So we'll start with Commissioner Pierce. I have a very short report today. Um, on October 31st, I attended our department head evaluations with the rest of the board, and that's it. Thank you. Commissioner Borsma. Um, October 28th. At 5.30, we had a Brookings Behavioral Health and Wellness Board meeting. And then the 29th and 30th, I was out in Pierre for the South Dakota Housing Conference, and there was a lot of discussion about um, TIF and discretionary formulas being used across the state to help with affordable housing. And so I would fully expect that as we look at how projects start to roll out in the next couple of years, there will be more requests for things like that just to help leverage other resources to, to be able to make affordable housing more attainable in more places across the state. Um, and then on the 31st, again, our, our department head reviews. So that's it. Thank you. Commissioner Krogman. Yeah. Um, I had a couple more meetings. Uh, 28th, um, we had the BCOAC meeting at noon. Uh, that went well. Um, obviously, the parking lot is our main concern, and we're, we're getting along there, and uh, they're able to, to get that paved. And that's been good. Um, and then just, uh, you know, working on uh, things. We do have new board members. We talked about that, that uh, um, we have our board are on one-year terms and so um, we'll be looking at that next week and in two weeks I think people there and it sounds like we're having some people that are interested in serving on the board so that's a good thing um, and that was about it there uh, then that night I had the Brookings Health uh, board meeting there too um, and uh, things have definitely improved at the beginning of the year their numbers were quite a bit down but over the last three or four months, uh, they've really been doing a good job and are back up to uh, really close to their budgeted numbers uh, for the year. So uh, they're hoping the last quarter fills up here pretty good. Um, and then uh, 30th had a beta meeting. Um, there, uh, Paul Brazino, the city manager, was there for his first meeting. Um, so he's going to be on the board. We had a good discussion there. Um, again, we talked about uh, recapped the game day stuff there and the, and the city uh, hired beta to have provide services from uh, they they wanted people to park coming into town park at the Swift Hotel, then they would bust them over they started doing that about five in the morning and they had I think six buses there ready to go to bring people across the interstate and over to the game day location there so they didn't have as many people as they thought they would have into that area I'm not sure if it, the word didn't get out or people just tried to drive and park that's probably what some of the stuff did but uh, so they went overview on that and then again just uh, working on that memorandum of understanding with the school district on potential place for a joint facility so that's been a lot of that there too and then on the 31st uh, same thing with department head reviews so that's what I got <coughs> a question 
conversation about a joint understanding with the school district? Is there any conversation about um, if that all falls together, and I know there's a lot to, between now and then, when that might happen, that they would move? Uh, you know, uh, they don't know for sure. Um, the, the problem is, is you got two different types of entities trying to work together, and their timelines will be different. Um, the federal funds, the hoops that uh, the beta will have to jump through will not be the same hoops that Brooklyn School District have to. And so that process can go there. So that that's part of the memorandum of understanding is to pay for uh, um, a study or a person, a consultant, to see how that could come together and if it can come together. So this is just kind of the um, study phase of if it's even possible. Um, and so, but they are looking at the memorandum of understanding, sharing some costs to have a consultant come in and say, yeah, this is what it looks like. This is what we could do. This is what each entity would need to do. Um, I know Beta needs it sooner than later, and, and you know the school could use it as soon as possible. They have you know a lot of their buses sitting outside right now too. So, um, but we don't know for sure. And, and I understand that. I'm only asking because we're talking about potentially doing something with the highway department, mm -hmm. and I'm curious if everything went the way people would like it to go, what budget year would that be in? Uh, I would say <laughs> That's really my two question. years. Two years? Yeah. To to be, I mean, if you said a year, that would have, everything would have to fall right into place. And, you know, you're dealing with federal government part of it, and that could that could be delayed six months on somebody's desk potentially. So, um, but the state, you know, re is really going to help that because the state is heavily involved in that transportation uh, dollars, and, and they seem to be on board, and they're kind of ready to go. So if we can... Yeah, I would say so. That'd probably be re realistic. Um, yeah, around there. So a couple years, probably. Sure. All right. Commissioner Jensen. On the 28th, I uh, attended the BCOAC meeting along with Ryan. He kind of explained what went on there. On the 31st, uh, department head reviews. And on the, the 1st, I did do an intergovernmental meeting up here at 3 o'clock. So that's it. <laughs> sure you were. All right. <laughs> My report, the 23rd uh, attended a, uh, a meeting that President Dunn put together on SDSU, kind of the outlook at the university for the next few years and uh, kind of a realistic look at, at probably not having growth exceed what we've seen in the past for a long time and resizing the university and in terms of some lost FTE positions up there and, and the impact to the community and to the county and sales tax revenue if they uh, can't maintain their their, uh, their their enrollment figures over the next few years and wanting us to know that uh, not only us but other members of the community, including the industrial members of the community, how important it was to uh, think of the university and all our plans in the future and how things and decisions we make uh, may have some impact on the university. In addition to that, we requested that things that are done at the university really have an impact on, on the industries in town and also on the, uh, the, the governmental bodies in town when it comes to the city, in particular with sales tax revenue. Uh, an interesting meeting for an hour, uh, uh, a group of about 30 people. On the 23rd, also a busy day, went to the spectrometry demo, was able to, to uh, attend part of that. Uh, an interesting process. I was interested in the fact that they're going to refly the city. I think that was appropriate. Obviously, it's best when the leaves are off the tree, so as you can see, a 3D view of things. So, and the fact that they've their uh, resolution is extended out beyond the, the city's boundaries. Uh, I think that, that's a good deal. Also, uh, uh, BDC at noon that day. Uh, BDC is continuing its, its promotion of entrepreneurship. And also having discussions on, on vision brooking funding in the next campaign. So they're working on those things. On the 28th, they attended Northwestern Energy's reception uh, for people, and it was their actual board meeting. Interesting to meet some of their new officers and the officers they had before uh, for about an hour and a half. And, and on the thir 31st, of department reviews, and that concludes my report. Any questions? Good questions for Ryan. All right. 
Uh, with that, we have some correspondence that came in from the Boys and Girls Club, but thank you. That doc document was received. I think you all have a copy of that. Item 12 is executive session in accordance with South Dakota Codified Law 1-25-2, parentheses 6, for security information. Is there a motion to move into executive session? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Let's move into executive session. We'll take about a five-minute break if, if you could do it in five minutes. <laughs> 